Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. Now, when installing Ubuntu or pretty much any other distribution, are you the kind of person that takes the first option on the installer? You know, on the, the one that says, uh, you know, erase disk and install? Well, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. However, I prefer the something else option so that you can manually partition the hard drive. This lets me specify partitions for uh, my home folder, root directory, and so on. So in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about why you'd want to do this as well as look at two different partition schemes. There's a number of advantages to partitioning your hard drive, but at least in my opinion, the most important is that separate home partition. With a separate home partition, you can reinstall your system without having to reinstall all of your data. Now, this is a huge time saver when upgrading, oh, say from oh, Ubuntu 15.10 to Ubuntu 16.04. Plus, don't forget about those configuration files stored in the home folder. There will be less configuration that needs to be done on a reinstall. Of course, backing up your data is still a good idea even if you do have that separate home partition. So don't think that going this route is going to be a substitute for good backups. So, in my case, having multiple partitions is essential for my workflow. When I test a distribution for review on this channel, I don't use VirtualBox or some other virtualization software. Each distribution gets run on real hardware, so I set up a small old 25 to 30 gigabyte partition where I install that particular distribution for testing. At any one time, I may have four, five, six, seven uh, distributions running on my system. So let's take a look at some partition scenarios. Now our first scenario is a standard mechanical hard drive of 320 gigabyte storage, although the storage capacity really isn't too important here and we're on a system with four gigabytes of RAM. Since mechanical drives are much slower than SSDs, I want to set my partitions up to maximize speed. So my first partition will be my boot partition and it's formatted in EXT2, not the usual EXT4. The reason is that EXT2 lacks the journaling, which gives it faster, uh, faster read speeds, which translates into faster boot speeds. I, also, I set the capacity at one gigabyte, but you could probably get by with only 512 megs of capacity in this partition. Now our second partition is going to be our root and this is formatted in ext4 although xfs and btrfs those are options as well. If you are a new new Linux user though go ahead and stick with ext4. I set it at 30 gigabytes capacity which is more than most Linux users are ever going to use. You know, even on my system, uh, with all the stuff I've got running, I'm still at less than 20 gigs. The third partition is swap space. If you're not familiar with Linux swap, it's a space where pages of memory can be copied from the RAM to a hard drive. In this video, I'm not going to cover everything about swap, but do watch for an upcoming video that will go into details on swap. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, I set the size of my swap partition equal to or slightly larger than the amount of RAM that my system has. So in this case, since we have four gigabytes of RAM, we're going to go with four gigabytes of swap space. Now, our final partition is the home partition, and it encompasses all the remaining space on the hard drive. Now, once again, we formatted to ext4. Uh, but like the root partition, XFS, BTRFS, those are fine as well. One thing I want to point out is that the swap space is located between the home and root partition, so read and write times going back and forth are going to be minimized as much as possible. 
Now, the second partition scheme we're going to look at is a 120 gigabyte SSD. For those who don't know the terminology, SSD stands for Solid State Drive. There are no moving parts and integrated circuits are used as memory storage. So think of them as giant flash cards. SSDs are much, much faster than traditional mechanical hard drives. Access time is the same throughout the drive, so we don't have to worry about the quote-unquote location of our partitions. So no worrying about where we put the swap and that sort of thing. So looking at the chart I've set up here, you'll see we don't have a dedicated boot partition. With the fast speeds and great access time of SSD, it's not really necessary, although you could do a boot partition once again if, if you like to. Um, once again, I've set the root partition to 30 gigabytes formatted to EXT4. Swap space is once again set to 4 gigabytes to match our RAM. The home partition is 82 gigs formatted to EXT4. One thing you'll notice different here is that we have a small 4 gigabyte portion of the drive that is not formatted. This helps to extend the life of the SSD. Now I'm not going to get into the explanation of why it's a little long-winded and whatnot. Uh, let's just accept the fact that we got a little extra space that we're leaving unformatted. Well, I hope this video has helped out those of you that had questions about Linux partitions. As always, if you have questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Now, if you found the video useful, please share it on your favorite social media. Subscribe if you are not a subscriber, and I hope to see everyone on my next video. Thanks a lot.